hi everyone welcome to my youtube channel and welcome back if you've been here before my name is alexis and on this channel i talk about important lessons and takeaways that i get from viral topics and viral conversations today i want to talk about different ways in which we label one thing as another and it's usually something bad or something not very conducive to our well-being and we go ahead and redefine it as something different and we usually do so to make us feel better about ourselves or to make said thing more acceptable to society. We live in a society full of followers. So usually when something is labeled as something else, people don't usually question it and they just follow it anyways. As long as said thing is supposed to be good for you, even if it's not actually good. So I made a list of the things that I'm speaking of. But before I get into my points today, if you guys could please hit the like button. Go ahead and share the video and comment to let me know you stopped by because I'm very happy to have you all here. I'm going to start my first point with nice versus good. Not everything or everyone that's nice to us is good to us. And I feel like people sometimes get those two things mixed up. But what's actually interesting is that I think for something to be considered good to you, there has to be a certain level of niceness or kindness or goodness to that thing or that person. But on the flip side, not everything or everybody who's nice to you is actually good. So when something is nice to us, when something or someone is nice to us and we hear something negative or bad about said thing or that person, it makes it harder to accept some of the negative things that we hear or to even give it a chance or to even investigate or explore that. Why? Because some of us have already mistook that thing or that person being nice to us as them being good. We will give grace to people that we don't even know because they were nice to us or they look presentable or they look nice. And we see that with a lot of celebrities recently who have different lawsuits coming out against them. And it takes society so much and so long to believe some of the victims. Why? Because that celebrity presents well on TV. And sometimes the celebrity in question isn't even a nice person. Sometimes we know the celebrity in question isn't a good person because of some of the uh, behaviors that they have displayed on camera or throughout the years or rumors that we've heard. But we still proceed to believe that the victims are automatically lying. Another example is when a guy is just nice to you as a woman. And sometimes women internalize that and, just, and they just assume that because he's nice to you, that makes him a good person. And it's only deep into the maybe relationship or partnership that you come to see his true colors. But the true colors were always there, but he was just doing that in a nice way. So that kind of blinded you. So I really hope I'm making sense here. Sometimes we mistake nice for good. Those two are not the exact same thing. Number two, some people have the term being mean and being real mixed up. There are some people out here who point fingers and criticize a lot under the pretext of being real. But truth be told is that they're just mean and they have their own demons that they're dealing with. And they don't want to face their own reality. So they take all your pain and pressure and anxiety and try to put it on someone else. We see that a lot happening with things like the gender wars or even in politics, the back and forth. There's some people who think that they know better than the next person. If you are watching this, I want you to listen to this very closely. Nobody who is criticizing you with the aim of helping you is going to do so in a way that hurts you. Healing or getting better is not supposed to necessarily hurt, especially when someone is out here to really make your life better. For example, when it comes to weight loss, somebody telling you you are fat and ugly is not telling you that to help you go lose weight. Anybody who's ever dealt with weight issues knows that insults and bullying doesn't help people lose weight at all. Now, am I saying that People who are overweight, for example, need to be cuddled. Not always. Sometimes you need some realities to be told, but those realities doesn't have to be too harsh. Nobody who really want to see you win is going to criticize you in a way that will hurt you even more than you already hurt. Nobody who want to see you stand up is going to criticize you or break you down in a way that's going to push you down even further than what you already are. Some people are in friendships, on partnership, or even with family members that are very nasty and mean to them under the pretext of being real. Number three is very common, but we fall for it anytime anyways. Lust for love. We often mistake lust for love. And I can't speak for everybody, but I'm pretty sure a good number of people have fell for this. 
and it usually happens at very young ages because the older we get the more mature we get the you know the less impressed we are with feeling like another human is just something we cannot live without some people mistake desire for necessity i would say sometimes we try to live our fantasies through real life sometimes people don't take enough time to really get to know the other person analyze the other person analyze the situation think about what circumstances did they meet that so-called love and all those things that contribute to how we feel about other people one thing that i know for sure that people don't ever think about is the reason why they love the people that they love if we as people take time to think about things like our preferences and why we prefer what we prefer i'm pretty sure a lot of things are gonna change because sometimes we fall for people that hurt us and i don't think that makes sense i don't think it's supposed to be that way in some cases i think it's lust but that's just me or it's something else that i don't really know the name right but i don't necessarily think it's love i think we need to get to know people before we can determine if we love them. And I think something that is more important than love is actually liking someone. I think you can love somebody and never want to see them again. But liking somebody, you cannot spend the day without. And I don't think it's unhealthy as long as both parties are having a lot of fun and are enjoying themselves. So in my opinion, I think liking somebody is more important than loving somebody. But we always use the term love to determine the epitome of how we feel about someone we want to be around. I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily the right term sometimes. We often mistake it. Lust for love. We mistake a lot of feelings for love, but is it really though? Number four, we often mistake toxic behavior and toxicity with mental illness. Or some people use mental illness as an excuse for their toxic behaviors. I have a little story time for this one. So I used to work at a Target in my city. And one of my managers was nasty, like not just one of them. It was a bunch of them that have really nasty attitudes. And they were very adamant in showing me that I was not welcome or I was unwanted at that job. So my manager in question was a mixed Hispanic woman, which deep down inside, I think there was a little racist undertone into the way she treated me. She was just nasty. When I say she's nasty, she would do things like she would walk into the break room. And she would greet every employee by name and she would make sure that she ignores me. That kind of nasty. Like all of this is happening on my first week and I just got there and I don't know what's going on. Meaning during my first week, if there's something wrong that I did, somebody could call me in the office and let me know what I did and how to fix it. But no, there was no communication. It was just her doing those little microaggression. Should I even say microaggression? Yes, it's microaggression. So I one day tried to open up about how nasty she was. I tried to open up to another coworker, and that coworker had the nerve to say she has ADHD. ADHD? What kind of ADHD? Like, what do you mean? Because last time I checked, I think ADHD is attention deficit. I don't know the rest, but ADHD is attention deficit something. I don't know what the other HD means. ADHD is if you forget somebody's, like if you forget somebody's name, it will make sense to say I have ADHD. But the thing is she purposefully ignored me while she was doing that. So it wasn't ADHD. ADHD is if she will forget my name and she will still look at me and say, I don't remember your name, I'm sorry, but hi to you as well. But she didn't do that though. Or she will sometimes see me and turn her back. Or sometimes when I will be talking to somebody or when I would need her help and I will call her, she wouldn't respond or she would just turn her back on me. That's not ADHD. That's like my progression to its finest. And she would do that almost every day. Like I said, I did not like being around her because as a manager, even if I needed help with something, she was never there to help me. ADHD is not the reason behind her nastiness. She's just straight up a nasty person. She's a toxic person. She has toxic behavior. And I'm noticing that a lot. That's the main excuse for school shootings and things of that nature. So there goes the school shooter. He hurt a bunch of people, but... He was depressed because he had no friends and his mom didn't like him or whatever the excuse is. But it's like, we also have to leave room for the fact that some of these people are just toxic and bad people. And it's okay to call it as such. We often mistake those two things. Toxicity is not mental illness. Mental illness don't turn you into a bad person. Mental illness don't turn you into B-I-T-C-H. Mental illness don't turn you into a vile human being. 
mental illness don't turn you into a racist. Mental illness don't turn you into a sexist. Mental illness don't turn you into a or a pissed. Okay, let's just not, let's just not. Okay, it's okay to call a crime a crime. It's okay to call bad people bad people. It's okay to call a toxic person a toxic person because that's what they are. But can we just make mental illness just a mental health thing and not something that people use as an excuse to get away with things? Thank you. Number five, we often mistake arrogance and fear with confidence. I personally, I judge someone's confidence not by the way they try to control the environment or the surroundings, but by how they react to that environment or those surroundings. What I mean by that is sometimes arrogant people who are afraid, afraid to not fit in, afraid to be rejected, sometimes they will be very loud and they will pretend as if they are confident. They will pretend as if they got it made. They will pretend as if they are untouchable. They will just pretend like fake it until you make it, basically. They will fake it until they make it. So they will pretend as if they run things. If those people that they have managed to convince that they are creme de la creme, if those people walk away from them, they're nobody. I don't necessarily trust people who have to impress everybody else. If you are a respectable person, trust me, people are going to fall in line. If you are somebody worthy of love, if you are somebody worthy of attention, trust me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to naturally come to you. You don't have to work that hard. There's a lot of people here who are arrogant and scared and they will go ahead and demand attention. They will go ahead and demand love. They will go ahead and demand affection from people and they will pretty much force you into it. And that's just fear. That's just arrogance. You probably have insecurities that you need to work on. Confident people, however, confident people don't follow the crowd just because. Confident people have a mind on your own and they don't care what anybody has to say. Confident people know who they are. Confident people don't care what you think. Confident people have control of themselves. Confident people don't try to control everyone else. Confident people know that what's not meant for them is not meant for them. I can see confident people getting attention without asking for it, without begging for it. I see people who are arrogant and scared demanding attention and getting upset when they don't get it. I think as a society, we often mistake those people who are arrogant and scared to be rejected. We mistake that for confidence because they're just loud. But actual confident people are often ostracized and ignored. They don't even care to fit in, so it's not a loss for them. I actually think a lot of celebrities, especially the rappers, you know, the ones who are loud about your masculinity, especially them, I think those are some of the most non-confident, insecure people on the planet. They define masculinity as getting a bunch of women, obviously because they cannot do anything else, like, for example, use your brains. So they redefine masculinity as getting money and a bunch of women. And then I would say a lot of models also. If you have to constantly be on social media asking for people to give you attention, you're probably not that confident. And that's how I see a lot of them. So yes, my example is celebrities. The loudest celebrities, which is almost all of them, the loudest celebrities are the most insecure and they're the most arrogant and they're the ones who are the most scared of what life would be if they didn't have everybody else's attention. Next, and this one also ties to celebrity culture. It is a luxury lifestyle versus wealth. We often mistake luxury lifestyle, luxury items with wealth. So we see somebody with a luxury lifestyle with a bunch of fancy cars, clothes, materialistic things. And we automatically assume that they're rich and they're wealthy. No, they're not. A lot of Instagram influencers don't have money like that. A lot of actors and actresses don't have money like that. Now, I don't know how broke they are i'm not in your circle i don't know how much they struggle because you see when it comes to things like celebrity world it's not the same as our world because you can read in a magazine that somebody has an 80 million dollar network but that doesn't mean they have 80 million dollar in the bank and also they have way more bills than us and i feel like that's what a lot of people are missing sometimes when it comes to celebrities celebrities have way more bills than we do so some of you have to pay maybe two thousand in the rent electricity. We don't get paid enough for that. Most of us at least. But a lot of celebrities, they have way more bills than that because they have to pay staff. Do not mistake luxury items and a luxury lifestyle on social media, on TV for someone who, who's rich and who got wealth. Some people really have the wealth and some people don't. So next, we often mistake a cult for community. A cult actually requires a lot and sometimes doesn't give us back as much as we invest in it. Because some cults are really just here to take advantage of the people. Some people might even say that the churches are cults because 
you are supposed to have this community, but you have to pay tithes. And I, I've seen pastors asking people to pay tithes. I don't know what's going to happen if you don't pay your tithes. Cults are things that people go to to seek community. And sometimes the requirements are weird and outlandish. And when you give someone an inch, they will end up taking a mile. Cults, I don't believe, are very conducive to us as people, even though it seems from the outside that a community is being built. But I don't necessarily believe that it helps the people. I don't necessarily think that's a good thing because there's way too many conditions to belong. And from there, that's where you can kind of get people to a point where it's a little harder to kind of walk away from said cult. And cults are very much normalized because a lot of people are in cults and they don't even know it. I see cults as something that people cannot live without, but it's really not healthy for them. Imagine being so addicted to a certain community to the point where if somebody points out that community's flaws, you get so angry that you're willing to fight and get in trouble and even look bad over said community. But a lot of times the leaders or the people who win the most from that community will never do the exact same thing for you. Some people don't even want to call church the cult, but it's pretty much a cult. You pay tithes, you have to invest in one way, shape or form financially, not just with your time to belong there. Next, we sometimes label danger as fun. Things like hookup culture could catch an STD. A lot of people do. Could get pregnant. A lot of people do. Getting drunk, smoking excessively, you risk becoming addicted, especially if you already had mental issues or your family has a history of addiction. Things of that nature. Things that are very dangerous for us sometimes, we label it as fun. When exactly does consuming something that makes you lose control of your actions or the way you move a good thing? Like, what makes it a good thing exactly? It's very dangerous, like over smoking, becoming high. And those are my three main things. People who don't have to get high all day, but they do it anyways. Drunk, getting drunk. Hookup culture is a mess. It was, I don't know who made hookup culture cute. It was never cute for both men and women. I think it doesn't work for anybody. It's one thing to have relationships and experiment. It's another thing to just offer yourself physically and spiritually to somebody you don't even know just for the sake of being fun. Like, how is that even fun? Next, and this is my final point, accountability versus blame. Sometimes we mistake blame with accountability. I always say every time someone is pointing the finger at the next person, trying to hold them accountable, especially when it's somebody you don't know, you're just kind of blaming that person for your own problems. Somebody who never sees the mistake in your manners or in your actions holding others accountable i don't think it's genuine if the goal is to create a better society or a better environment it would sound a little better if you can criticize others but also admit what you could change to fix the situation or admit to the mistakes that you've made even if the mistakes that you've made is just being done there's some people who are victims because the mistake that they've made was trust the wrong person for example uh, the mistake that they've made was not have discernment for example in those cases it's okay to say hey next time I need to be a little more prepared for a friendship or relationship. Next time, this is what I need to do for a job interview, for example. But there's a lot of people here that I listen to, especially on social media, who like to point the finger. They like to point the finger under the pretext of holding others accountable. But some of them don't even have enough room to hold anybody accountable. Like, who are you? Sometimes it feels like unnecessary back and forth in between some people. It's usually just blaming the next person. This is what you've done to me. This is what you've done to me. But what can you do in the future so you do not encounter or fall into the arms of that same type of person? You know what I mean? Sometimes, especially on social media, it's a lot of back and forth, a lot of finger pointing and blames being masked as accountability, as holding others accountable. In my opinion, yes, we can hold others accountable, people we have close relationship with, but there always have to be a moment of reflection of what could I have done better? Even if you're a victim, even if you're a victim who has to walk away from a situation, there has to be a level of, of accountability with self for the accountability to make sense. Always pointing the finger at others to me doesn't lead to a better society. It doesn't help any situation when the fingers are always pointed at the next person. It's way too many, you know, accountability going on. Let's hold these women accountable. It's always what I hear. Let's hold these women accountable. Like, it doesn't sound like accountability. It sounds like blame. Because I'm pretty sure there's something 
in that scenario. Like you contributed something to that scenario. It might not be the worst thing. You might not be the attacker. You might not be the one to fully blame for everything. But even if you just made a mistake of trusting the wrong person, you still have to take accountability for that. I would like some people to understand that real accountability is what you do to self. It's how you talk to self. It's looking inside of you and taking notes for you, like learning from yourself, learning from others. But accountability should start with self before you can maybe help other people out. Keyword, help them out, become better people. But if it's just a blame game, it's just a waste of energy and waste of time. And I think that's what I see a lot of times, even in personal relationships. This marks the end of the video. Again, if you would please like, share the video, stop by in the comments and let me know you were here. I'll be happy to hear from you. And my name is Alexis and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.